Hi, welcome to Mr. Otter Studio. Today I'm going to show you three different ways to shade in watercolor. This was a requested tutorial and I love doing requested tutorials and I thought that would be a great one to end the year 2017. All you need are basic watercolor supplies if you want to do this with me. You need watercolor paper, a set of watercolors, a paintbrush. I'm just using a round number 10. I'm going to use a micron pen to outline my circles that will fill in with these shadows some water and a paper towel. The three ways that I'm going to show you are the first way, and this is the way I usually use, this is glazing over the top. And when you glaze over the top, you can use the same color, you can use a complementary color, you could add a little black to the color. There's many ways to do it, and then I'll show you how to handle that edge if you want to soften it up a little bit. Number two is to have your dark color already mixed up and your medium color or whatever color your object is, and then just to add it to it as you start moving into those shadows. And number three is to do the reverse. So you start, usually in watercolor we paint light to dark, and with this method we start with the dark area and then slowly add water to our brush till it gets light. So grab some kind of circular object and trace three circles. Once you've drawn your three circles, let's just set up our watercolors. Normally I would put it on the side, but I want you to be able to see the colors that I'm mixing and how I'm doing this. So. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is just mix up a color. I'm just going to use purple. So I'm just going to mix up the main color that I'm going to be using right here in the middle. And the reason I'm making a puddle is I want enough color to cover all three of these circles. I don't want to have to remix. So just drop some water into your tray or onto a plate if you don't have one of these. And then we're going to start mixing a color. You can use whatever color you want. Just make sure it's not too light. All right, once you have that color mixed up, let's go ahead and just paint in this first circle because that will need to dry before we do this next one. So just grab your color and then go ahead and just fill in your circle. Just re-dip if you need to. You can slightly overlap. Okay, let this dry and then we will add some shading to the sides of it. This is the one where we're going to glaze, so we need to let this dry so that we can add another color over the top. Now let's work in this circle, and this is where we're going to add a darker color to it. So what I'm going to do is mix up a darker color right here, and to make it I'm just going to not use quite as much water. I could use a little bit of black, I could use a little bit of orange to darken it up, yellow, more blue. It could also just be more of a saturated color, so maybe it has more pigment than this puddle has which it for sure does. So this was the color of my puddle. That's the color of this paint that I'm mixing right here. So mix up a darker color, whichever color you're using. Just make it a little bit darker. And then we're just going to pretend that there is a light coming from this side. So we're going to add our shadow along this bottom left-hand corner. All right, so to do this technique, what you want to do is paint in the lighter area. And then when we get to the darker area, we're just going to start dipping our brush. So we're going to be doing a wet wash next to a wet wash and so they will bleed together. So here is my lighter wash along this side and then I'm going to rinse my brush off and dip it in my darker wash and I'm just going to come right next to it because I really want them to bleed, I want them to mix. And this one is a little bit harder to control. So in this one we just added the darker color around the edges and this is the reverse. So we're starting with our dark color and then we're going to move into the light color. So I'm going to paint in this darker shadow first, keeping it really wet because I want to be able to work with this. It's going to get thinner as it wraps around. This is going to be a little bit thicker. Then as I move to the center, dip your paintbrush in the water, rinse it off, and then just come right over that line. Rinse my brush off even more, blot it off, and then come next to that line. So we're just adding water as we come into the center part. So this is a little bit looser as you can see it's it's gonna run around it's gonna be a little bit crazy all right now let's try this one so I can add the exact same color over the top so this is the color that I painted if I add the exact same color over the top it's going to look darker so let's try it and let's see so I'm just using the exact same color and I'm just glazing over the top of it now how do you get rid of this hard edge rinse your brush off blot it off on your paper towel and then just come along that edge the hard thing with doing this technique is sometimes it will lift off the color that's underneath. So you do need to be a little bit careful when you use this technique. You just have to make sure the color underneath is completely dry. Let it dry for as long as possible and you will get the best results. So here are the three different techniques and these are the results. 
So on this one, we just added the darker color over the top and it wasn't even darker, it was the exact same color. So it may have had a little too much water in it. Sometimes it will lift off the color underneath if that happens. This is where we just added a darker color next to it when it was still wet. And over here, it's still kind of drying. And this is where we added the dark area first and then slowly added water as we moved towards the highlight and we rinsed our brush off. Try it out, experiment. Let us know in the comment section below how you like to shade with watercolors. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for subscribing. We appreciate all of your support, all of your nice comments this year. We really do read those and they make our day. So thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful 2018. Good luck with your artwork and with painting. I'll see you in 2018. Have a wonderful day.